Chapter 13. Joseph Smith Stand. God made Aaron to be the mouthpiece for the children of Israel, and he will make me be God to you in his stead, and the elders to be mouth for me, and if you don't like it, you must lump it. Joseph Smith, DHC 6 319-320, April 8, 1844. Many have argued that Joseph Smith did not oppose giving the priesthood to the black race, but that it was started by Brigham Young. For this reason it is necessary that we look back to see what Joseph Smith really said about the priesthood and the black race. The strongest arguments and controversy regarding this issue concerned Joseph's good friend Elijah Abel. The Case of Elijah Abel In 1832 Elijah Abel, a mulatto, joined the church and soon became a wrestling friend of Joseph Smith, and even lived in the prophet's home for a short time. On December 20, 1836, he was ordained to the priesthood by Zebedee Coltrin. This has given rise to much speculation and c-o-n-t-r-o-v-e-r-s-y at at some saints jumping to the conclusion that Joseph Smith had no objection to the black race receiving the priesthood, but from some additional information, we learn that this was not the case. John Taylor thought perhaps Abel had received the priesthood before the word of the Lord had fully been received on the subject, he even thought it had been one of the mistakes of early church history. See Minutes of the Council of 12, June 4, 1879. Just four days prior to this, L. John Nuttall, secretary to President Taylor, wrote the following historical account of Joseph Smith's statement. After meeting Prest, Taylor invited me to accompany him to Bro. Smoots, where with others, the subject of the Negro being ordained to the priesthood was considered, whereupon I wrote the following statements. At the House of Press, A. O. Smoot, Provo City, Utah County, Utah, 5 p.m., President John Taylor, Elders Brigham Young, A. O. Smoot, Zebedee Coltrane and L. John Nuttall met, and the subject of ordaining Negroes, sick, to the priesthood was presented, pressed, Taylor said, some parties have said to me that Zebedee Coltrane had talked to the prophet Joseph Smith on this subject, and they said that he, Coltrane, thought it was not right for them to have the priesthood, whereupon Joseph Smith said to him that Peter on a certain occasion had him a vision wherein he saw heaven opened, and a certain vessel descended unto him. As it had been a great sheep caught at the four corners, and let down to the earth, wherein all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth, and wild beasts, and creeping things, and fowls of the air, and there came a voice to him. Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, Not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean, and the voice spake unto him again the second time. What God hath cleansed, that call not thou common. And that the prophet Joseph then said to Bro, Coltrane, as the angel said to Peter, What God hath cleansed, that call not thou common, speaking of the Gentiles. Pressed, Taylor asked Bro, Coltrane, did the prophet Joseph Smith ever made such a statement to you? Bro, see, no sir, he never said anything of the kind in his life to me. Press, T, what did he say? Bro, company, the spring that we went up in Zion's camp in 1834, bro. Joseph sent bro, J.P. Green and me out south to gather up means to assist in gathering out the saints from Jackson County, Mo. On our return home we got in a conversation about the Negro having a right to the priesthood, and I took the side he had no right. Bro, Green argued that he had. The subject got so warm between us that he said he would report me to bro. Joseph when we got home for preaching false doctrine. Which doctrine that I advocated was that the Negro could not hold the priesthood. All right, said I, I hope you will. And when we got home to Kirtland, we both went in to bro. Joseph's office together to make our returns, and bro. Green was as good as his word and reported to bro. Joseph that I had said that the Negro could not hold the priesthood. Bro. Joseph kind of dropped his head and rested it on his hand for a minute, and then said, Bro, Zebedee is right, for the Spirit of the Lord saith the Negro has no right, nor cannot hold the priesthood. He made no reference to Scripture at all, but such was his decision. I don't recollect ever having any conversation with him afterwards, but I have heard him say in public that no person having the least particle of Negro blood can hold the priesthood. Bro, Coltrane further said, Bro, Abel was ordained to seventy, because he had labored on the temple, it must have been into the second quorum, and when the prophet Joseph learned of his lineage, he was dropped from the quorum, and another was put in his place. Pressed, A. O. Smoot said, W. W. Patton, Warren Parrish and Thomas B. Marsh, were laboring in the southern states in 1835 and 1836. 
there were Negroes sick who made application for baptism, and the question arose with them whether Negroes sick were entitled to hold the priesthood, and by those brethren it was decided they would not confer the priesthood until they had consulted the prophet Joseph. And subsequently they communicated with him, and his decision, as I understood, was they were not entitled to the priesthood, nor yet to be baptized without the consent of their masters. In after years, when I became acquainted with Joseph myself, in Far West, about the year 1838, I received from Joseph substantially the same instructions. It was on my application to him what should be done with the Negro in the South, as I was preaching to them. He said I could baptize them by the consent of their masters, but not to confer the priesthood upon them. These two statements were duly signed by each of these brethren. L. John Nuttall Diary, May 31, 1879, 1290 290-293, see also Mormonism and the Negro, John Stewart, pages 9-11. It was not an easy problem for Joseph Smith to resolve. First, he had nothing personal against any righteous black holding the priesthood, thus, it was against his own personal feelings to restrict them. Secondly, he had to revoke priesthood from a personal friend which was embarrassing and painful for him. According to Thomas Shreve, Elijah Abel himself related the experience to him. The prophet Joseph Smith was commanded by God to withdraw the priesthood from Elijah Abel sick and revoke the ordination. There is no exception. The continued church's policy over the years is an evident fact that Presidents Young, Taylor, Woodruff and Snow, as well as Heber C. Kimball, William Clayton, and other leaders of the time, all knew of this excluding doctrine and continued to abide by it. Although there is no official church record as to the revocation, Elijah Abel affirmed the fact to Father Thomas A. Shreve when both were living in the Salt Lake Tenth Ward during 1872-1877. At the time, bro. Abel told young Thomas, who baptized Abel's grandchildren, that the prophet Joseph came to him with tears in his eyes one day and told him Abel that he had been commanded by the Lord to withdraw the holy priesthood from him. Patriarch Shreve testified many times before his death in 1931 of the facts in the case and of his close relationship with Brother Abel. As of this date there are still living three members of the Shreve family who know of the facts to which their father testified Elijah Abel told him. Caleb A. Shreve Sr., The Salt Lake Tribune, Forum 26 October 1970. In the minutes of the 70s journal, under the date of December 20, 1836, it shows that Elijah Abel was ordained by Zebedee Coltrin, although he had been instructed two years prior to that not to give the priesthood to a Negro. However, it is apparent that he did not know at the time that Elijah was black because he had only about one-eighth of the blood of a black man. Later he was ordained a 70 by Joseph Young. In this connection President Joseph F. Smith referred to Elijah Abel, who was ordained a 70 by Joseph Young, in the days of the Prophet Joseph, to whom Brother Young issued a 70s certificate, but this ordination was declared null and void by the Prophet himself. Later Brother Abel appealed to President Young for the privilege of receiving his endowments, and to have his wife and children sealed to him, a privilege President Young could not grant. Brother Abel renewed his application to President Taylor with the same result, and still the same appeal was made to President Woodruff afterwards, who of course upheld the position taken by Presidents Young and Taylor. Dot, 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 Council Minutes, August 26, 1908, Benny and G.A. Smith Papers. Although Abel had the priesthood revoked, he was still allowed to visit with the elders and 70s quorums. He was highly respected and was honored with a call to teach the gospel as a missionary to Canada and eastern United States. There is no record of any ordinance work done by him after his priesthood was revoked. His mission was mainly to teach the gospel, similar to lady missionaries today. Two weeks after his return he Elijah Abel died, December 15, 1884, of debility, consequent upon exposure while laboring in the ministry in Ohio. He died in full faith of the gospel. LDS Biog. Enk, Jensen, 3577. Civil and Religious Rights. The Prophet Joseph Smith had no prejudice, animosity, or bias toward Negroes as a people. In fact, he made several favorable comments in their behalf. At five went to Mr. Sollers with Elders Hyde and Richards. Elder Hyde inquired the situation of the Negro. I replied, they came into the world slaves, mentally and physically. Change their situation with the whites, and they would be like them. They have souls and are subjects of salvation. Go into Cincinnati or any city and find an educated Negro who rides in his carriage and you will see a man who has risen by the powers of his own mind to his exalted state of respectability. The slaves in Washington are more refined than many in high places and the black boys will take the shine off many of those they brush and wait on. 
DHC 5217. And later Joseph remarked, Are we now indeed in a land of liberty, of freedom, of equal rights? Would to God I could answer, yes. But no, no, I cannot. They have robbed us, we are stripped of our possessions, many of our friends are slain, and our government says, your cause is just, but we can do nothing for you. Here we speak with national pride of a Washington, a Lafayette, a Monroe and a Jefferson, who fought for their liberties, achieved one of the greatest victories ever won, and scarcely has one generation passed away before 15,000 citizens petitioned government for redress of their wrongs, and they turn a deaf ear to their cry. When I gaze upon this company of men, I see those who are actuated by patriotic and noble principles, who will stand up in defense of the oppressed, of whatever country, nation, color or clime. I see it in their countenances. It is planted by the Spirit of God. They have received it from the great Elohim, and all the power or influence of mobs, priestcraft or corrupt men cannot quench it. It will burn. It is comprehensive as the designs of God, and as expansive as the universe and reaches to all the world. No matter whether it was an Indian, a Negro, or any other man or set of men that are oppressed, you would stand forth in their defense. I say unto you, continue to cherish those principles. Let them expand. DHC 6295. He spoke these words two months before he was killed while under the protection of the governor of Illinois, and not surprisingly, no one was ever convicted for his death. The Prophet Joseph Smith wanted all people everywhere to enjoy the liberties and freedoms guaranteed by the U.S. Constitution, but ironically, they were denied to him and his followers. Along with civil rights there are also certain religious rights. It is upon these two important issues that rights should be clearly understood. Civil rights do not take away religious rights, and vice versa. Men have been murdered, people have been persecuted, cities have been burned, and wars have been fought over these rights, but they still seem to be misunderstood. People today are probably losing more rights than ever, and our federal government, instead of protecting them and making things better, is making them worse? The federal government seems to create more problems for people than it solves at 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 least it was so for the blacks, Chinese, and Mormons. They should have all been granted their civil rights. However, when it comes to the keys and powers of the priesthood, God has established bounds that cannot be overturned or neglected. The former restrictions by the Lord still apply in our time, as explained by the Prophet Joseph. Had I anything to do with the Negro, I would confine them by strict law to their own species, and put them on a national equalization. TPJS, page 270. The South holds the balance of power. By annexing Texas, I can do away with this evil. As soon as Texas was annexed, I would liberate the slaves in two or three states, indemnifying their owners, and send the Negroes to Texas, and from Texas to Mexico, where all colors are alike. And if that was not sufficient, I would call upon Canada and annex it. TPJS, pages 334 to 35. What could have been the design of the Almighty in this singular occurrence is not for me to say, but I can say, the curse is not yet taken off from the sons of Canaan, neither will be until it is affected by as great a power as caused it to come, and the people who interfere the least with the purpose of God in this matter will come under the least condemnation before him. And those who are determined to pursue a course, which shows an opposition, and a feverish restlessness against the decrees of the Lord, will learn, when perhaps it is too late for their own good, that God can do His own work, without the aid of those who are not dictated by His counsel. DHC 2438. Joseph was saying that. 1. The Negroes should have national equalization or civil rights. 2. They should be confined to their own race. They would do better in Mexico. 3. When the curse is taken off the Negro, he will lose the blackness which had been put there as a curse. 4. Those who interfere the most with those decrees of God will come under the greatest condemnation. 5. These things should be established by strict law. Joseph did not agree with the mixing of races, and in January 1844, as mayor of Nauvoo, he fined two Negroes for attempting to marry white women. DHC 6210. This doctrine originated with Joseph Smith. The following three references definitely identify Joseph Smith as the originator of priesthood restriction from the blacks in our dispensation. This doctrine did not originate with President Brigham Young, but was taught by the Prophet Joseph Smith. At a meeting of the General Authorities of the Church, held August 22, 1895, the question of the status of the Negro in relation to the priesthood was asked, and the minutes of that meeting say, 
President George Q. Cannon remarked that the prophet taught this doctrine, that the seed of Cain could not receive the priesthood nor act in any of the offices of the priesthood until the seed of Abel should come forward and take precedence over Cain's offspring. Way to Perfection, Joseph Fielding Smith, page 110. Brother A. O. Smoot, said W. W. Patton, Warren Parrish and Thomas B. Marsh, were laboring in the southern states in 1835 and 1836. There were Negroes who made application for baptism. And the question arose with them whether Negroes were entitled to hold the priesthood. And by those brethren it was decided they would not confer the priesthood until they had consulted the prophet Joseph, and subsequently they communicated with him. His decision, as I understood, was they were not entitled to the priesthood, nor yet to be baptized without the consent of their masters. In after years when I became acquainted with Joseph myself in the far west, about the year 1838, I received from Brother Joseph substantially the same instructions. It was on my application to him, what should be done with the Negro in the South, as I was preaching to them. He said, I could baptize them by consent of their masters, but not to confer the priesthood upon them. The Church and the Negroid People, as quoted in Mormonism and the Negro, Stuart, page 11. The question arises from time to time in regard to the Negro race and the priesthood. Dot, 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 it is true that the Negro race is barred from holding the priesthood, and this has always been the case. The Prophet Joseph Smith taught this doctrine. Dot, 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 Joseph Fielding Smith, Imp. Era 27, 564. Matters concerning abolition, slavery, and mixing of blacks and whites were placed on the shoulders of Joseph by those fighting the Mormons. It even brought contention among church members. Therefore, in 1836 the prophet responded by writing an article, an excerpt of which follows. I have learned by experience that the enemy of truth does not slumber, nor cease his exertions to bias the minds of communities against the servants of the Lord, by stirring up the indignation of men upon all matters of importance or interest. I am aware that many, who profess to preach the gospel, complain against their brethren of the same faith, who reside in the South, and are ready to withdraw the hand of fellowship, because they will not renounce the principle of slavery, and raise their voice against everything of the kind. This must be a tender point, and one which should call forth the candid reflections of all men, and more especially before they advance in an opposition calculated to lay waste the fair states of the South, and let loose upon the world a community of people, who might, peradventure, overrun our country, and violate the most sacred principles of human society, chastity and virtue. DHC 2437 the policy of segregation has been a disturbing one for many people, because of the difference in character rather than color. In 1833 the editor of Times and Seasons wrote the following statement. We often lament the situation of our sister states in the South, and we fear, lest, as has been the case, the blacks should rise and spill innocent blood, for they are ignorant, and a little may lead them to disturb the peace of society. T and S 1379. This did occur, and we are familiar with the riots, burnings, killings and civil disturbances that have continued ever since. Many claim even today that there are too many differences between the blacks and whites to mix races, and they use for proof such examples as this. On any given day in America, an astonishing one in three black men in their twenties is under criminal justice supervision, either in prison or jail or on probation or parole, according to a study being released today. Percent of men aged 20 to 29 in state and federal prisons, jail, probation, parole on any given day. Blacks, 32%. Latinos, 12%. Whites, 7%. S.L. Tribune, October 5, 1995. By the turn of the century it was well understood that Joseph Smith had admonished the same doctrine and commandment, that Israelites refrain from marrying or giving priesthood to the black race. This was brought up in a council meeting of the 12 in 1900. President George Q. Cannon stated, President Young held to the doctrine that no man tainted with Negro blood was eligible to have the priesthood, that President Taylor held to the same doctrine, claiming to have been taught it by the Prophet Joseph Smith. Council Minutes, August 22, 1900, Benian Papers. In those early days of the Restoration, many black people were baptized into the LDS Church, but Joseph did not allow them to receive the priesthood after the Elijah Abel incident. That policy was also continued in Brigham Young's administration. If Joseph Smith would have taught it any differently, Brigham would have also.